Welcome and greetings, career-minded superstars. You are listening to the exclusive Career Coach, your podcast for all things career. And I'm Lisa Edwards, the indispensable career coach for superstars just like you. Now let's dig into this week's topic, shall we? Go from dragging yourself to work each day to finding a job you love. The Career Spring program is for high achieving and ambitious mid level professionals like you who are looking for a job that uses your zone of genius, recognizes your value, and pays you what you're worth. If you're ready to learn more, schedule a complimentary consult using the link to my calendar in the show notes. Be sure to follow me on Exclusive Career Coaching on Facebook. Lisa Edwards on LinkedIn and Lisa.Edwards on Instagram. Greetings. Hey guys, how's it going? All right, today we're going to talk about changing behaviors in yourself and in members of your team. I've been rereading the book Quiet Leadership. It's a book I've had on my shelf for a pretty long time. It's written by David Rock. And it's the subtitle is Six Steps to Transforming Performance at Work. And one of his concepts while I was rereading really jumped out at me, and I wanted to share it with you and and apply it. Brain science tells us that when we focus on a behavior we wish to change, we're actually cementing the neural pathway that was created when we began repeating that behavior in the first place. Think about that. (laughs) Let me read it again. Brain science tells us that when we focus on a behavior we wish to change, we are actually cementing the neural pathway that was created when we began repeating that behavior in the first place. So think about a behavior maybe that you've wanted to change and think about how much time do I spend thinking about I want to change this behavior rather than thinking about what is the new behavior I want. And that's the one that I want to focus on. Once a neural pathway is created in our brain, it's going to be there. They don't go away. But what we can do is sort of diminish it and sort of uh, kind of override it. I kind of think like overriding on an old floppy disk or something. We're creating a new neural pathway that is going to be stronger and more accessible to us than the old pathway that we've kind of let atrophy, if you will. So here's an example. Let's say you're a newly minted manager, just got your first managing job. You've got two entry level employees in the marketing department of your company. You've never managed people before and you haven't been given any training to do so. And you feel a little bit like you've been thrown in the deep end, but you really want to succeed. One of the areas that you're struggling with is that one of those employees is consistently coming into work late, 30 minutes late. Her name, we'll call her Jane. Because all of this is new to you, you sit Jane down and ask her why she's late every morning. She tells you she's a new mom and she finds it hard to leave her son at daycare every morning. By the way, this actually happened to me. Can't say I handled it very well, but I would handle it much better now. Because this is unacceptable behavior, you need her to be at work on time. Maybe there's a company policy about being late. You tell Jane she has to come to work on time. End of conversation. You got to fix this. Well, how does Jane receive that feedback? (laughs) Well, she's probably frustrated. She might be anxious about whether you're going to fire her, and she might begin fixating on how late she is every morning. Like, that's all she thinks about is how late I'm going to be. I'm going to be late again. But the behavior doesn't change, and it may even, because she's focusing on it, it may even get worse. And the only change that you've really helped her to make is additional stress on her because now she's afraid you're going to fire her, right? So the behavior doesn't change. The behavior may even get worse, but we've added some additional layers of stress and anxiety onto Jane and maybe to ourselves as well by handling it this way. So let's rewind. Let's have this conversation with Jane again. You ask her why she's late every morning, and she tells you she's a new mom, and she says she finds it hard to leave her son at daycare every morning. You then ask her why. Why do you find it so hard? And you, But you ask it with compassion, right? Tell me about that. Why is it so hard to leave your son at daycare every morning? And she says it's because she's, he starts crying. That makes her cry, and she can't even bear to hand him off to the daycare worker. And she admits, she finally opens up and says she's even started going to the daycare later 
And later, because she knows what's coming, she's avoiding it, putting it off. So that's making her even later to work. You let Jane know that you see how hard this could be. And then you ask Jane, what are three possible solutions to this problem? Solutions that would get her to work on time and help with the daycare handoff. You're now on the same side. You're not threatening Jane or implying that there could be, you know, something negative happening to her if she doesn't fix it. You are on the same side of the table helping her to solve her problem. And you don't do it for her. You ask her. So she, at first, she's like, I don't know what to do. I, I've thought about this and thought about this. But you keep gently persisting. I'm sure you have some ideas. You're really smart. You are very creative. Think. Let's think again. Let's just try a little bit harder. So Jane thinks about it. Jane realizes that you're trying to help her. You're not trying to, you know, put her on the spot, but you do want to help her solve the problem. So finally, she comes up with three possible solutions. So one is, well, I'm, my husband could drop the baby off and see if that goes more smoothly. Maybe the baby wouldn't have as much trouble detaching or the husband detaching at the daycare center. So that's one possibility. Secondly, she says, well, I could get up earlier so that I could spend more time at the daycare. So I get to spend the same amount of time at the daycare, but I can do it and still be on time. And then thirdly, she says she could ask for ideas from, she has an online mom group. And she said, well, let me, let me reach out to my online mom group, tell them what's happening, tell them my boss is concerned and see what suggestions they have. So you give Jane some paper so she can write those ideas down write her options out then you ask her how she wants to proceed with those three options let's come up with a plan it doesn't you know make it doesn't do any good if you just write them on paper and then forget about them so jane says she's going to ask her husband to drop the baby off for one week and during that time she will reach out to her online group and then after one week she and her husband will evaluate how him dropping the baby off is working and she might start getting up for 30 minutes earlier every morning for the next week to see how that works and kind of compare the two and there may be some combination of them that they that they agree on you and jane then agree that the goal is for jane to consistently get to work on time right we're no no confusing what the issue is here from your perspective and you iterate that jane the reason that this is concerning is number one you're a really valued member of my small team there's only three of us and i really need you here and you're valued and then secondly you're going to be a better employee and a better mom if you have less stressful mornings we can solve this it's going to help your whole day go better now jane feels very differently than she did when you just told her to fix her problem and go she probably feels some relief because she has possible solutions that she just wasn't able to see before she just kept telling herself there was no solution to this problem and now she feels some hope and she has a plan, right? So it's not just some ideas, but okay, how can we implement these things? And she also feels very valued to you. You took the time to help her with this problem that isn't a work-related problem, but is affecting her work. And she feels valued and appreciated because of that. And she wants to solve this problem now for you as her boss, as much as she does for herself. She feels loyal, increased loyalty to you and wants to really, you know, satisfy the conditions of employment and and be a good employee so how might this look if it's your own behavior that you're trying to change so let's say that you tend not to speak up during meetings you have thoughts and ideas in the meetings but in the moment rather than speaking up you tell yourself that your ideas aren't good enough to share and people will think you're dumb if you offer those ideas up. I'll just keep my mouth shut, you tell yourself. And this has become a habit for you. And to the point now where the dialogue in your head is people don't want to hear what I have to say, right? Like it's it's progressed from, oh, I, I don't think I'll, I'll speak up in this situation. I'll keep my mouth shut too. People don't want to hear what I've said. We've kind of globalized this this thing. Nobody, you know, I'm not important. My voice is important. We've just blown this thing up. So you decide to focus on the behavior you do want, which is very specifically to begin contributing in meetings. This is my new focus. It's not on how I don't contribute or how I haven't been contributing. It's on 
contributing in meetings. So the first decision that I make is I'm going to contribute one thing during each meeting. That's it. I am requiring myself to contribute one time during each meeting, and I'm going to set a parameter that I want that to happen in the first half of the meeting rather than waiting until everybody's in a rush to get out of there. I, I feel like, you know, if I make this contribution whenever things wrapping up, it might not be as valuable. So I want to do it in the first half of the meeting. If you know what will be discussed in the meeting, then you can think about what contribution you might want to make ahead of time. And if you don't know what the meeting is going to be about or what we're going to discuss, you decide, okay, I'm going to stay present in the room. I'm going to pay attention to my thoughts. I'm not going to keep telling myself the old thing, but I'm going to tell myself my contributions are valuable. I'm going to listen intently to what others are saying and look for that opportunity to make my contribution. And after a month of maybe focusing on that behavior of making one contribution each meeting, maybe I next focus on specific ways that I can make my contribution more confidently and competently. So now I'm contributing. How can I say it with more confidence? How can I say it in such a way that people will pay attention and will value what I'm saying and will really listen to me? It could be something about how you modulate your voice, your specific words that you use or don't want to use and how to make eye contact when you're speaking. And there are specialists out there. I actually have a, a very loose connection with someone, but I have referred a few clients to him, and I believe he's in South Florida, but he works on vocal delivery. So for people whose job requires giving presentations and, and those kind of things, he works on doing that with confidence and poise and the, the tricks of the trade, if you will, in, in terms of your voice modulation. So I would love for you guys, here's an assignment, think about a behavior that you would like to change in yourself and how specifically you want to make that change. So, if, you know, think about what do I want the new behavior to be and what are the steps I need to take to make that new behavior? And if you supervise people, you can use the same tool to help employees find their own solutions to behaviors. I promise you that shutting them down and telling them to fix it without helping them does not benefit the relationship and does not get you the results that you want. Also, focusing on what they're doing wrong is not useful as opposed to let's think of the behavior we are wanting to work on that we do want to have and how can we get there. And this strategy also works when employees want to learn a new behavior, such as improving a specific act of their, a specific aspect of their communication skills or learning how to be a better presenter. So it could be something that they're doing, quote unquote, wrong that we want to correct, but it could also be emerging a new skill, a new behavior, and they want to have a strategy for getting stronger with that behavior. I hope this has been helpful as you think about changing behaviors and i'll see you next week take care you've been listening to the exclusive career coach with lisa edwards ceo of exclusive career coaching it would be great if you would rate review and subscribe to this podcast also i want to be your career coach so be sure to ask questions about your career management challenges and job search situation until next time